18 years ago, my aunt's boss took us out four-wheeling in his disco, and the group was mostly defenders, and I was in love. I had to have a defender. So a friend of mine's husband and I went on the search, and it took us about six months to find a yellow soft top, which is what I wanted, a five-speed. And we went to see one here in Denver, and the guy had it in the driveway, and he was actually polishing it with a baby diaper. It had huge dragon stickers all over it. It was lowered. It probably had never even seen the mall parking lot. And he made me promise to take care of it, keep it inside. Um, he didn't technically make me promise to not take it off road. I, I think he kind of insinuated that, but never technically promised. And so the first thing I did when I got home was get a hair dryer out, take the dragon stickers off, put 33s on it, um, a bumper, a skid plate, rock sliders, and hit the trails. First time I went wheeling, I showed up at the meeting spot and I said, hi, I'm Christy, I've never wheeled before. And they said, oh, well, you need uh, rock sliders. And I said, I have them. And they said, you need a skid plate. I said, I have it. You need diff guards. I said, I have it. You need a winch. I have it. We went through almost everything. And I said, I have it. I have it. And they're like, oh, darn it. I guess she's got to go. So uh, it's not like I'd never driven before. I grew up on a farm driving tractors and dune buggies, ATVs, snowmobiles, all that. But I'd never four-wheeled. So we went out on the trail and they proceeded to leave me behind a lot. And I kind of had to figure some things out. And finally, a couple guys hung back and I said, listen, I really want to learn how to drive. Will you just help me, teach me, show me? And I kind of broke the ice and they said, of course. And so then it was kind of game on. It's what can we get Buttercup over? <laughs> so over the years, they really taught me a lot and um, just kind of went from there. Buttercup is actually Princess Buttercup. She got her name from my favorite movie, The Princess Bride. Well, the 90-inch wheelbase really does help out here in Colorado. Uh, the 90s have a great approach angle, departure angle, very nimble on the trails, good breakover point. Um, it's very well balanced. It's just kind of this magical little beetle. It just crawls up stuff. Um, what I've done is skinnier tires that uh, sneak up in the wheel well, so I've got great articulation. I mean, this thing goes anywhere. I've done, I think, every trail it's not a buggy trail in Colorado and Moab, and it's done great. For all the strengths, there are some weaknesses to owning a Defender 90. For instance, you have to carry a lot of spare parts. The axles are about that big around and made of glass. Um, they're very expensive to fix. It's kind of hard to find people to fix them sometimes. Um, as far as accessories, the Jeep world there's a million accessories. For the Defender 90s, not so much. My front bumper I had to have custom made and I made my rear bumper. Even though it is a V8, you'd be surprised at how little power it actually has. It's quite a production to get it up the rocks at altitude sometimes in Colorado. It's a five speed, so there's a lot of clutch, brake, gas, transmission brake, shifting. There's a lot going on in there to keep it uh, moving. But it's fun, it's a challenge, and that's why I got it. I've known Christy for a couple of years and seeing Buttercup sitting in the garage was just, it's almost heartbreaking. I always wanted to see Buttercup back out on the road. So when she decided to get it fixed up, I was super excited and they got it over to a shop, got the basic things going to get it back on the road, but she didn't want to drive it because she was just afraid she was just going to be too attached to it. So she asked me to drive it back from the shop. And because these tires are so old, I couldn't get it on the freeway. I had to take surface streets. And she's like, treat it like a tractor. You know, it's, it's, it's really utilitarian. It's, it's like a beast. And I get in it and I had to drive it like 15 miles on side streets. And I was surprised just how smooth it shifted, how fun it was. The only thing is compared to my big old Jeep JL, this thing's like trying to get into a matchbox car. I had to open up the window so I had room for my elbow. This thing is just, it, it's not a big vehicle inside or on the outside, but that's gonna give this thing a lot of nimbleness on the trails. I mean, I really hope that she gets a chance to, to get it finished up, get some new tires on here, and really get this thing back out on, maybe not the hardest trails that she used to do with it because you do have to carry things like extra axles because they do tend to break because 
they're really, really small. So, uh, but getting out on some moderate trails and during the summer or springtime, I think would just be phenomenal. And I know I hope to see Buttercup back on the trails. So when I bought Buttercup, oh, 17 years ago, I paid $23,000. That was with all the Dragon stickers and being lowered. Today, boy, it's probably three times that amount. So they have gone up a lot in price. Um, this one's not for sale. I guess anything's for sale, but I don't want to sell Buttercup. The hardest trail I've done on Buttercup was probably Carnage and Left Hand Canyon, which is closed now, and maybe Spring Creek. That was hard. That has a really hard rock garden. <laughs> a lot of carnage on Spring Creek, um, but it was fun. Again, a lot of winching, but I do have a center diff lock. Um, I'd go out with a lot of defenders and they're, they're actually quite capable going through the rock garden. We'd pass a lot of Jeeps. I wheeled Princess Buttercup without lockers. Uh, the reason she now has lockers, which I've never used, is we were at the donut shop in Sedalia and my differential just kind of bloop, fell out on the ground. And off Buttercup went, no power steering, no power brakes. I couldn't stop it. So I'm looking in my rear view mirror and here comes all the guys from my club running behind me trying to throw rocks and logs and anything under my tires <laughs> to get me to stop. I couldn't stop it. So very slowly, um, we did a little tour of Sedalia and eventually uh, ended up down at the bottom of Sedalia, stopped in a dip in the road. So uh, that's a story on how I got lockers. Well, as the years went on and I wheeled Buttercup pretty hard, I had a little overheating problem and nobody could seem to figure it out. And it was so bad, I would wear canvas pants, um, hiking boots, and I had a stick. And when I wasn't actually going over an obstacle, I would sit and use a stick to uh, push a gas pedal because I couldn't keep my legs down there without getting third degree burns. So that was a little annoying. Um, spending thousands of dollars to try to figure this out I just wasn't getting better. I think the last straw was when I was headed up to Grand Junction for a Bill Burke clinic. And I started to go up I-70 to get into the mountains and white smoke everywhere, couldn't see anything. Slammed on the brakes, jumped up, grabbed my fire extinguisher. I'm not gonna set it off unless I actually see flames because those do make a mess. And no flames, everything quieted down and my oil cap had come off. I just had an oil change. And so that was all my oil spilling on the engine. So I was stuck. Um, I called a tow truck and they came out with a flatbed, loaded it up. And my friends up in Grand Junction said, no worries, dump it at the shop, get in your car, drive up. We'll share defenders for the weekend. So the flatbed truck driver and I headed to the shop and we get within maybe 200 feet of the shop. He loses all his hydraulics. Hydraulic fluid all over the place. Cars are going by, loop-de-loop. -loop. I'm like, dude, you've got to get a cone out there. We're going to have a pile up here. So we sat there for about half an hour, and he called another flatbed. And they said, your defender is going to have to sit in our yard all weekend um, till we can get this truck fixed and get the hydraulics working. I said, no, that's not really an option. Buttercup's not sitting anywhere in a yard over the weekend. So I started it up. And I winched myself down as tight as I could so they could get the chains off the tires. Buttercup pops back up and we pushed it onto the other flatbed. That flatbed drove it 200 feet to the shop, dumped Buttercup off. And the guy said they'd fix it. And I said, no, I think I'm done. So I had him take it to my shop here and Buttercup sat for eight years. Well, my friend Carrie got a Jeep about a year and a half ago, and he started going out on trails, and I started tagging along, and then pretty soon he let me drive, and then pretty soon his Jeep got pretty built up, and we started doing harder and harder trails, and I thought, you know, I really miss this. And Buttercup had been sitting in the shop for eight years on four flat tires, untouched, holding up parade floats, actually. Um, so I thought, well, I'll get a Jeep. They're so much more reliable. Um, heated seats, heated steering wheels, heat, <laughs> air conditioning, radio, no chance of breaking down. I thought, I'm going to get a Jeep. So I got a Jeep and took it out on Slaughterhouse, Hackett, a few trails, stock, uh, Chinaman, and decided, you know, I really need to build this up. 
And so I thought, well, I'll sell Buttercup. I've got this old Defender just kind of hanging out in my garage. So I knew if I drove it, I might change my mind. So I had all my friends drive it to different shops. We got her running, got her fixed up, and I had to take it to the detailers, last step. And I thought, I'm strong, I can do this, it's a mile. And so I drove it to the detailers just fine. It was 10 degrees, it had snowed, um, the heat doesn't, didn't work at all, the sides were rolled up, it was miserable. I was like, yeah, I love my Jeep, um, I'm getting rid of this Defender. Well, then I went to pick the Defender up from the detailers and it was about 45 degrees and sunny, beautiful day, rolled the sides up, got out of the parking lot, burst into tears. I cannot sell Buttercup. I cried all the way home. After eight years of unplanned sitting in my shop, to get her running again, we really just did a fuel pump and an oil pump, um, oil change, and that was it. There was a lot of smoke involved, but <laughs> eventually burned off and um, off she went. Also, she needs new tires. These are 16 years old. Um, I don't really trust them to even back out of the garage. Well, I really love the creature comforts of my Jeep. This is just utilitarian. This is a blast. It's a five speed, the sides roll up, it's basic. Well, the Jeep has all the creature comforts like automatic, uh, heat, air conditioning, very nice, very capable vehicles. Um, this doesn't have all this. This is a um, very different experience to drive. There's a lot going on. It's a five speed. You've got the clutch and the gas and the brake and the handbrake and shifting and center diff locks and it's exhausting, um, but it's fun. I do like that experience as well. Um, the closest thing this has to a computer would be the radio, which is from 1995. Um, I can pick up a few stations. Yeah, it's fine. Can't hear them anyway. You have a soft top. So I look forward on getting out on the trails and trying out the rear locker.